It's still here, baby. I still got them. All right, guys. So I had a um, subscriber ask me, hey, man, he wanted to know how to get the weight off uh, his stomach. Well, and also somebody asked me which carbs to eat, so I handled the stomach first. Here's the thing, guys. You can't spot reduce your body fat, all right? What you got to do is you got to lose weight <clears throat> over your whole body, and your genetics will determine where that fat comes from. Now, here's the thing, guys. So when y'all see people, some people won the genetic lottery, some people didn't, all right? And I'm just talking about as far as body. I'm not talking about face or anything like that. I'm just talking about his body. And what I mean by that, guys, is, is some people, they body distributes their fat more evenly over their body than others. So in other words, there are some guys who can get a six pack at about 10% body fat. On the other hand, there's some guys who got to get down to 6% body fat to see a six pack. And why that is, that's because the guys who get down to, who got to get down to 6% body fat means that they hold a lot of their fat around their stomach, which means that they got to get more lean than the guy who gets, has to get down to 10% because his body distributes his fat more evenly over his body, over his legs, over his arms. I'm for one that has to get very lean to get my abs in. All right. If, um, my arms and my legs and calves will be really ripped at about 12%, but I still have fat around my stomach. So that means that I'll look good in a tank top because my arms will be vascular and everything, but I'll be holding a lot of fat up in my midsection, all right? So that means I gotta get down to like 7% body fat to get my abs in, opposed to you get somebody else and they'll be the same 12% body, body fat percentage that I am, and they arms have a lot more fat, so they won't be as vascular in their arms, but then they can hold up their stomach and you can see visible abs. But then if you look at their calves and their arms, they're not as vascular as I am in the arms because their body holds more fat on their arms and their legs. That person is more lucky. You'll rather have your the body fat spread more evenly over your body. If nothing else, guys, it's just more healthier, all right? Because as we all know, having uh, abdominal fat causes like heart problems and stuff like that, heart disease and stuff like that, just having fat up in your abdomen, uh, visceral fat and all that. Not just not the sub subcutaneous fat, but the visceral fat. So, you know, uh, you can't spot reduce. And if you're a female watching this, and y'all guys see how some women have the big boobs. I'm talking about natural. I'm not talking about the, the women who've been enhanced. But I'm just talking about the natural women who got the big boobs, the big old ass, the big thighs, and no stomach. They won the genetic lottery, guys. All they are is fat, but they body distributes their fat in the area that men want. And you'll see some women, they'll be fat with no boobs, no ass, with a big old ass waist, all right? Looking like a fucking pear. And what that is, guys, that's just bad genetics. They body stores all their fat around their abdomen area. And you'll see some women that the women who got the big boobs and shit like that, they body just stores all their fat in their chest. So when they eat, instead of them getting a fat stomach, they just get big ass boobs, all right? Same for some women. Some women, they'll be, you know, slim everywhere else and all their weight go right to their hips and ass. Now, if they had bad genetics with that same body fat, they'll be looking totally different. But lucky for them, their body stores the fat in the right places, all right? So that's the thing with that, guys. You can't spot reduce. If either you got good genetics or you don't, as in far as where your body's going to pull the fat from, some of us got to get down to damn skeletal uh, body fat percentages to get our abs in, while some of us, some guys can get into like 10 12% body fat, and you can see visible abs at 10 to 12% body fat, all right? And as far as the carbs to eat, guys, the carbs, the carbs you want to eat are going to be depending on your goals and your appetite. So let's hypothetically say you have a big appetite, right? Let's say you have a big appetite. All right, if you have a big appetite, obviously you don't want to go be eating a lot of simple carbs and shit like that because you're going to be fat as hell. You already got a big appetite and now you're going to eat a whole bunch of simple carbs. So if you know you got a big appetite and you love to eat, which is me, I have to eat a lot of vegetables. I cannot eat a lot of starchy carbs because I would gain weight because I got a big fucking appetite. Uh, let's say you're a guy who is hypothetically, some guys, I've had clients who fucking hated eating. I mean, literally, eating was a chore to them. It's not a chore to me, but they hated eating, all right? And so they didn't care for it that much. Obviously, you want to eat more starchy and simple carbs if you're trying to bulk, all right? So it all depends on what your goals are. So if you're somebody who's harder eating and 
you're trying to bulk and you know you don't have much of an appetite, well, obviously, you don't want to be sitting around eating a whole bunch of celery sticks and broccoli. That don't make no fucking sense. You want to eat rice, potatoes, things like that, wheat bread, things like that that got some carbs in it. You don't want to be eating, eating a lot of fibrous carbs if you don't got a big appetite. All right? Or somebody like me who got a big appetite, but I store body fat easily, obviously I want to eat more vegetables. It don't make no sense for me to be sitting around eating a whole bunch of carbs and potatoes. I'm just going to get fat as shit. All right? So you combine a big appetite with easy to put on body fat, that's a bad recipe if you're going to eat a whole bunch of rice and bread and shit like that. If you're somebody like me, you need to be eating a lot of fibrous carbs. If you're somebody who got uh, don't like to eat that much, like you, it's, eating is really a pain in the ass for you. And I know some of you guys going to find this hard to believe. It is some guys out there who just don't care for eating that much. I've trained them. Obviously, you want to have these guys on more starchy carbs, rice, uh, potatoes, things like that, things that quinoa, things like that quinoa, things like that that's got carbs in it that's going to get them a lot of bang for their buck. You don't want to have a guy like that eating a whole bunch of vegetables, all right? So that's the change. It just depends on what your goals are, guys. That's how you determine what carbs you want. It just depends on what are your goals. You're bulking, you're leaning out, whatever the case. Even me, when I'm bulking, I cut down on the vegetables. Even when I'm bulking, if I'm trying to eat in a surplus, I still have to eat some vegetables because if I did not, I'd eat 1,000 carbs a day. So I still have to get some vegetables in, but by and large, I cut down on it. So it just depends on what your goals are. All right, guys. Write the comments down below, guys, what videos y'all want to see next. Y'all guys been asking some good uh, questions down below. I'm making the videos as fast as I can. Put them down below. Like, comment down below. Share the video. Let's grow this channel. Appreciate you guys. Don't forget to shop them tees and holler back.